Hey guys and welcome back to Now I Know. Today we are talking about translation in eukaryotes. So what is translation? Translation is nothing but it's a process of protein synthesis. A process where the protein is synthesized is called translation. And protein is nothing but sequence of amino acids linked together by peptide bond. And in case of eukaryotes, the translation occurs in cytoplasm. If you guys remember, we had seen in uh, transcription eukaryotes that the transcription occurs in nucleus. But when it comes to translation, this mRNA needs to be transported into the cytoplasm of the cell in order to get translated because the ribosomes are present in uh, cytoplasm. So in case of eukaryotes, the protein synthesis or the translation occurs in cytoplasm of the cell. So the translation requires machinery wise three main components and different factors like uh, initiation factors, elongation factors, release factors to come uh, at different stages and help in the translation. So machinery wise we have mRNA because of course the mRNA is the place which has all the information, the nucleotides that needs to get translated into protein, okay. And this information in the mRNA is what we called codons. That means what is codon? Codon is nothing but group of three nucleotides is one codon. And this one codon or three nucleotides gives us one amino acid. Okay, so codon is nothing but group of three nucleotides that gives us one amino acid. So mRNA is the one that has the information that has all the codons which protein has to be made. Now something has to read this in order to translate and that is done by tRNA. So the anticodon for these codons are present on tRNA. tRNA can come and bind to this particular codon and this part here has the anticodon, the complementary to the codon. So tRNA will have the anticodon and tRNA is the one which brings in the amino acid attached to its 3 prime end. Okay, so tRNA has the anticodons and that brings the amino acid, the correct amino acid based on the information that is coded on the mRNA. Now all this happens where? All this happens on ribosomes. Now these are the facts that we have established long back in old videos. So all this is occurring on the ribosome and when it comes to eukaryotes, we talked about ATS ribosome. Two subunits are there, large and small, 40 and 60. We'll just talk about it uh, in a while. And uh, different factors as we go on, based on the stage that we are talking about, we'll see the factors. So we will have Initiation factor, since we are talking about eukaryotes, we'll put one small e over here. So eukaryotic initiation factor, eukaryotic elongation factors and eukaryotic release factors. We'll see all this in a while. So this is the basic things that we need. Now let's start first with the mRNA that we require. So when it comes to eukaryotes, this is how the mRNA that is going to get translated looks. We'll have phi prime cap and a 3 prime poly A tail, okay. So what is this 5 prime cap? It is methylated guanine nucleotide. There is a methylated guanine nucleotide at the 5 prime end and that is what we call 5 prime cap. Now this particular site is the one that is recognized by the ribosome to attach itself. So it's a very important part of the mRNA. The 5 prime cap is the one that gets recognized by the ribosome and it will know that here it has to bind itself. Now we'll come to this also uh, in detail just in a while. This 5 prime cap is followed by a short known coding region. That means this is the region that does not code for any protein. After which comes the start codon. So start codon is the place which marks you know, it ha there has to be some starting point and an ending point for the process. So the start codon is a site where the 
ribosomes and tRNA will know that it has to start now translating the mRNA. So start codon is the place where the protein synthesis will start. So in case of eukaryotes, start codon is always AUG, right? Phi prime A U G 3 prime. This is the direction. So this codes for methionine. We know this very well. So the start codon in case of eukaryotes is always 5 prime A U G 3 prime that codes for methionine. This is followed by the series of codon, the series of nucleotides that needs to be translated and that, that is called open reading frame because here are the uh, nucleotides or the codons those will be translated into amino acid this is called open reading frame and followed by this somewhere it has to stop so there is a stop codon now this is going to be similar to prokaryotes that we had seen there are three stop codons UGA, UAG or UAA any one will be there that marks the uh, end of protein uh, translation. So there will be a stop codon followed by again a short region of non-coding sequence that does not code for anything followed by a long poly A tail at the 3 prime end. So a lot of uh, adenine residues are there. So this is how the eukaryotic mRNA would look. Now in some of the books sometimes you might read something called uh, COSEX sequence. So what that means is uh, in sometimes in eukaryotic mRNA not all the mRNA or not all the cells sometimes what happens is in this start codon AUG the upstream of the start codon will have three purin okay there will be uh, three purins uh, upstream of the start codon followed by a guanine in the downstream okay the start codon is in between three purin upstream and one guanine downstream. So this sequence is what is COSEX sequence okay and that was given by Marilyn COSEX the scientist who observed it who identified it that is why it is called COSEX sequence. So it is not always present or not all the mRNA would have but what it does if it is present it increase the, increases the efficiency of translation okay. Many eukaryotic mRNA uh, doesn't have it it lacks it. So uh, it doesn't mean that a pro a protein synthesis will not occur. But if COSEX sequence is present, definitely it is going to increase the efficiency of translation. What I read was how it happens is um, if there is a COSEX sequence, the chances of uh, tRNA and uh, ribosomes to recognize this start codon increases. It doesn't skip this particular start codon. So, uh, if there is a COSEX sequence, definitely the efficiency of translation increases. So that is what it is. So this is about the mRNA. Now let's look at the tRNA and ribosome. Now let's see tRNA. tRNA, uh, the one I told uh, that it brings or it has the anticodon and based on that it will bring in the amino acid. Now couple of points that we need to remember or understand is the amino acids are attached at the 3 prime end of the uh, tRNA and the tRNAs that brings in the amino acid that are having attached amino acid to it and it is going to bring in these amino acids are called charge sorry these uh, tRNAs are called charge tRNA okay because it has amino acid attached to it at 3 prime end. And they are the amino acyl tRNA. So you might read or you might hear this throughout the video amino acyl tRNA. So these are the tRNAs, those are charged, they bring in the amino acid because they have the anticodon matching to the codons present on mRNA. And when it comes to ribosomes, as I said, we are talking about eukaryotes. So we have ATS ribosome, two subunits, small subunit and large subunit, 40S and 60S. What you need to remember is 40 as the subunit that has the decoding center means uh, when the mRNA will be there, the smaller subunit will first come and recognize the uh, start codon and it will sit he over here along with the first tRNA. Okay, and then comes the large subunit that will come and bind and this will have the peptidal transferase center that means it has the ability to form the peptide bond for incoming amino acid 
molecules. Now we will see that in a while. So in short, remember that small unit is 40S containing de uh, decoding center and large subunit will have peptide as peptide transferase activity. I cannot speak today for some reason now. Anyways, so uh, yeah. And one more point about ribosomes to remember is it has three binding sites for tRNA, A site, P site and E site. We have talked about it briefly still I will tell you. The P site is the site where the first tRNA will be there. Okay, so the first amino acid methionine will be there on the T P site. The A site is the one that is always ready to accept the next amino acylated tRNA. You know, the tRNAs that brings in the new amino acid always comes on the A site. And from this P site, the amino acid will be transferred on the next tRNA. We are going to see this in a while. So, peptidyl transferase will occur over here. And then the E site is the one which is the exit site where the tRNA without the amino acid, once the amino acid is transferred from the P site, this is now without the amino acid, it will move to E site, it will exit the complex. So this is what it is. Again, I am just going to start with the diagram, all this will become very clear. Now the process of translation has three stage, initiation, elongation and termination. We know this by now because we have talked about it in prokaryotes. So initiation is when it has to start, you know, it has to initiate the process. Elongation is when the amino acids are being added and the chain is getting elongated and termination is when it has to stop. So let's start with initiation. Uh, now every stage we are going to look at certain, initia uh, certain uh, factors that come into picture. In case of initiation factors, Eukaryotic initiation factors are 1, 1A, 2, 3, 4F and 5. This is not 45, 5. Okay, 1, 1A, 2, 3, 4F and 5. And this 4F actually has 3 subunits, A, E and G. Okay, somehow you will have to keep this in mind. Uh, easy to understand actually 1, 1, A, 2, 3, 4, F which has A, E and G and 5. These are the factors that will come into the picture. So these are all eukaryotic initiation factors. Now when it comes to ribosomes, the eukaryotic ribosomes undergo association and dissociation and generally they are kept apart. Small and large subunits are kept apart by two initiation factors, factor 3 and 1, A. Okay, factor 3 and 1A, they to keep or prevent the binding of small subunit with the large subunit. That is how they are kept apart. Now, what happens is for initiation to occur, it is, you know, uh, unlike in prokaryotes, the first tRNA, that is the methionine carrying tRNA, because we know the first codon is AUG. So the first tRNA is going to bring in the methionine. This tRNA first has to bind with the small subunit. And now this will bind to mRNA. Okay. So before it binds to mRNA, before the subunit, small subunit binds to mRNA, it should have the first tRNA that, that has the methionine. And this complex over here, small subunit along with the first tRNA is called 43S complex or initiation complex or pre-initiation complex. Alright, so what, uh, let's just, let's just have a look over here. So this is the small subunit that is kept apart from large subunit by the initiation factor 3 and 1A. I have, I've mentioned here the role of every particular uh, factors that come into picture. Now, at this particular stage, we need the tRNA that has the methionine because that is the first uh, amino acid that needs to be added. So, this tRNA, the first tRNA, the tRNA met needs to be brought and put on the P site of small subunit and that is done by 5, B and 2 initiation factor 5b and initiation factor 2 both are gtp binding proteins they have gtp bound to it so these two gtp binding proteins 
5b initiation factor 5b and initiation factor 2 recruits the first trna to the p site of small subunit okay and in fact 5b helps the whole complex along with 2 gtp to be added on the uh, small subunit now this complex over here which has the small subunit bound with the tRNA, first tRNA containing methionine attached with it is 43S pre-initiation complex or it is also you might read it as 43S complex. In some book it is written 43S initiation complex. So this is what it is. It has the 40S subunit, the initiator tRNA, the first tRNA and all the initiation factors attached to it. So, here you see factor 3, 1a, 5b and 2 are there. So, this is 43s pre-initiation complex. Now, this will go and bind to mRNA. Okay. So, now I just have a look over here what happens in mRNA. This mRNA also ha should have some of the uh, initiation factors attached to it before it binds to this 43 uh, initiation complex. So, what are those initiation factors? That is the initiation factor 4F and we saw that 4F here has three subunits A, E and G. What is the function of those? So, this is how the 4F initiation factor is. There is E subunit that actually binds to 5 prime cap the G subunit that mediates the binding of this complex, there has to be some point where it binds, right? So that is the factor G in it. And there is 4A. This particular initiation factor has the RNA helicase activity. What happens is as the whole uh, structure moves from 5' prime to 3', prime, if there are any double strands or if there are any hairpin, uh, let us say for example, there are hairpin structure formed in mRNA, it needs to be, uh, you know, broken down and have straight mRNA. That will be taken care by this A subunit in the uh, initiation factor. And this particular subunit gets activated by another initiation factor called uh, 4B. Okay, so that is where the 4B comes into picture. I have not mentioned here 4B. So, let us just add it. So, in short, the mRNA will have 4F, initiation factor 4F bound at the 5 prime cap. And initiation factor 4B also will come and join because it is going to activate the helicase activity in the 4F. Sounds little complicated, I know what I am, you know, when I am telling you only, I feel it is a little too much information. But if you break it down, you just go back and again listen to the whole thing that I am saying. It is easy to understand, you know. All we need to remember is the order of all the uh, factors that is coming into picture. Otherwise, it is just, uh, we have, it is easy to remember what is happening. It is easy to understand what is happening. It is not easy to remember, I know, but easy to understand what every factor is doing. If you remember the order, accordingly, logically, you can actually know what they are going to do. Function wise, we will know what they are going to do. So, anyways, we have now this mRNA that has the initiation factor 4F and initiation factor 4B attached to it. This is 4B. This mRNA will bind with this pre-initiation complex. Now here this is actually going to recognize the 5 prime cap area and going to attach itself on the mRNA. Alright, this subunit will recognize this 5 prime cap and attach itself at this particular point. So this is how the initiation just binding occurs okay we are not done with the initiation yet but this is where it starts so this is where it binds this uh, 43s initiation complex binds to the 5 prime cap of mrna now what it needs to do is it needs to scan the mrna and find where the start codon is, right? Because it is, we just saw that between the 5 prime cap and the start codon, there is a little bit of a non-coding region. So, it needs to scan 
from 5 prime to towards the 3 prime and find where the start codon is. So, that scanning the process is called scanning of the mRNA will happen to find the start codon. And when the first tRNA that is the tRNA with methionine will find the start codon, it will fix it properly because now there will be proper bonding. There is anticodon present on the tRNA for the uh, AUG, complementary uh, base pair will be there on the tRNA. So, proper binding will uh, happen over here at the start codon. At this particular phase, where the tRNA is finding the start codon, the hydrolysis of GTP over the initiation factor 2 will occur and initiation factor 2 GDP will be released. Also, it will cause a release of initiation factor 3 and 4B. So, all this will be removed. And the moment initiation factor 3 is out, you know, this was keeping the large subunit apart. So, the large subunit can now come and bind to this whole complex. And this binding of the large subunit will result in release of the remaining initiation factor. The remaining initiation factors that is A and 5B also will be released and the GTP over here will be hydrolyzed. So, the first tRNA is now properly placed in the P site. This resulting complex is now called ATS initiation complex. This marks the end of initiation. We had first the 43S complex formation with all along, you know, what is this uh, 43S uh, complex? Small subunit plus the initiation factors and the tRNA that has the methionine. This binds with mRNA with some of the initiation factors. This together will start scanning for the start codon, the moment it gets the start codon, release of all different uh, initiation factors will happen. The moment that happens, the first, uh, you know, the three initiation factor three is gone. The large subunit will come and bind to this whole complex and that is called ATS initiation complex. Now, the whole thing is ready to start translating the mRNA. Now, let's move on to elongation. So, what happens at the end of initiation, this is where it, it stops. The first, if you can see this AUG, the first anti, uh, the first codon is bound by the tRNA that has the methionine at the P site and this A site is now ready to accept the next tRNA that has the next amino acid based on the codon, all right. So, the elongation is actually broken down into four stages where the first step is the selection of amino acyl tRNA because now the next tRNA has to enter here, the correct one. So, that is called the amino acyl tRNA selection, the correct tRNA based on the codon, the correct tRNA entering at the A site. Now, this particular process is actually energy driven. So, it requires one GTP containing next elongation factor 1. Now, when it comes to elongation, there are two factors, elongation factor 1 and elongation factor 2. It's easy comparative to initiation. All, all that jazz is there only for the initiation part. So, in case of elongation, we just have two factors 1 and 2 and both will have GTP bound to it. So, the first is of course, we need the correct tRNA entering over here that is called amino acyl tRNA selection. For this to happen, GTP bound elongation factor 1 will bring in the right amino acid or right tRNA at the A site and this is this requires energy. So, it will get the GTP uh, elongation factor 1 will be released or uh, the GTP will be hydrolyzed and GDP elongation factor 1 will be released. This results in addition of the next amino acyl tRNA at the A site. Okay. Now, you have amino acid at P site and A site. What needs to happen? This amino acid needs to be added on this right that is by peptide bond formation the next step is 
peptide bond formation between these two amino acids. And we just saw that the large subunit has the peptidal transferase ability. That means it can carry out the peptide bond formation. So this amino acid from the P side will be added on the A side. Okay, you see over here the peptide bond formation amino acid has been added on the A side tRNA. It always happens like this. From P side, the amino acid will be added on the top of the amino acid that is present here. So if, if my amino acid over here, if I show it in black, the amino acid that is in the black, that is the methionine, will always be on the top, okay? That will be the first amino acid. It will be added to the next one. I hope I make sense when I say that. So this is how it will go on. Peptide bond formation from the amino acid from the P site to A site. Now the peptide bond is formed. What needs to happen now? This needs to move one colon ahead, right? Because now we don't need this. We need to remove this. So this has to go to exit site. And this tRNA needs to come on the P site. So this needs to translocate one codon, right? One codon movement should happen. And that is called step number three, translocation. Now translocation is the second step where the elongation factor 2 will come into the picture and that is again energy driven process. So GTP elongation factor 2, GTP will be hydrolyzed and GTP elongation factor 2 will be released over here. So this whole process will result in translocation of this one codon movement will be there. As a result, you can see that exit site has the deacylated tRNA. The P site has dipeptide. And the A site is now again ready to have the new tRNA based on the codon on mRNA. So at this stage, what has to happen? This needs to go out. This needs to release. And a new tRNA has to be added. So new tRNA addition is the same process. And this particular tRNA needs to be released. So that is step number four, release of deacylated tRNA. Okay. So this release of tRNA, once it is in the E site, it doesn't have the uh, amino acid attached, it will be released. And at the same time, there will be addition of next tRNA at the A site. Now there is a dipeptide over here and a new amino acid. Next, the second stage, peptide bond formation, the amino acids from P site will be transferred on the A site. Again, the same thing will repeat and it will go on till it reaches stop codon okay so one cycle of this elongation you can see there are two gtp molecules that are used so one cycle of elongations will use two molecules of gtp two hydrolysis of two gtp will occur and the last step is termination because it needs to stop one at once it hits the stop codon and we saw that uh, there could be uh, one of the three stop codon uag UGA or UAA, any one stop codon will result in uh, termination of the translation. And in case of termination also, there are only two factors that we need to remember, the release factor 1 and release factor 3. There is no uh, release factor 2, okay, release factor 1 and release factor 3. So the release factor 1 is the one actually recognizes all three stop codons, okay. It, it, we just need one release factor, re, release factor 1 that recognizes all three stop codons. So it is the release factor 1 which will enter the A site once there is a stop codon. And the release factor 3, what is the role of release factor 3? It is a GTP bound release factor that will help the release factor 1 to dissociate, okay. So the GTP will be hydrolyzed and it will stimulate the dissociation of release factor 1. So you see the release factor 1 uh, along with the release factor 3 and GTP will enter the A site. The stop codon will be recognized by release factor 1. Once that happens, this binding will result in release of newly made peptide newly made protein and once that happens this release factor 3 will stimulate the release of elongation factor 1 and GTP is hydrolyzed. 
So at the end, the translation ends when the newly formed peptide of the protein is released, the tRNA that were bound are released, both the subunits are now dissociated, the disassembly of large and small subunit will happen and the mRNA is also released from the whole complex. So release of deacylated tRNA, dissociation of mRNA from the ribosome and assembly of ribosome in small and large subunit marks the end of translation. So for termination requires only release factor 1 and release factor 3. So that's all. That's all about the translation in eukaryotes. I know it, it might be a little longer video but uh, if you just go through it once or twice, I'm sure you'll understand the whole process and it's not that difficult to understand. It might take a little time for you to memorize certain things, but it is very interesting. And I hope this video was helpful. I will see you next time. Until then, keep learning.